I will admit, I haven't beaten every single 2D Sonic game, but I did play 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles a ton as a kid, and Sonic Mania absolutely blows them out of the water. And I know Sonic Generations is also a 2D, 3D hybrid technically, and I haven't played that one either, but we are in the middle of a Sonic Marathon, so you can tune in on Saturday at 1pm Eastern Standard Time if you want to see that. Because... <clears throat> that's when I upload. I know the title is a little extreme, especially coming from someone who hasn't played every single 2D Sonic game on the face of the earth, but I don't even care. Sonic Mania deserves it. Obviously, a ton of comments told me to play this game in the last video, especially since that video was called Sonic Forces is Good, and I already knew Sonic Mania was going to be amazing, but I was still incredibly surprised with how fun it was. Also, just to touch back on the Sonic Forces thing, I didn't say the game was great or even better than any other Sonic games. I just thought that it wasn't horrible. In other words, good. But we're not talking about that in this video. Just to justify the title some more though, before we get started with the video, let's compare the title screen of Sonic Mania to the other three original Sonic games. I think this works as a perfect metaphor for how the games compare to each other as well. All of them are great intros, improving a little bit each time. Some people can argue Sonic 3 was the best for its time, or that Sonic 1 is the best because it's the original that stemmed them all, and of course there will always be those Knuckles stands. But objectively, the Sonic Mania intro is a piece of art that isn't even in the same league as the others. The story for this game game is perfect by the way. There's no dialogue, you just see the bad guys doing bad guy things and then guess what? You gotta go get him. This is perfect for a 2D Sonic game if you're asking me, though I am gonna miss the cheesy voice acting for this video. But this game is extremely fun in the way that a Sonic game should be. The momentum feels perfect and all of the new added mechanics throughout the game makes the levels all unique and fun. Also, you're able to play as not only Sonic and Tails, but also Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. They all play differently, but I only had the time to beat the entire game once, and I was both Sonic and Tails when I did. I've heard Knuckles has an entire extra level in his playthrough though, and I always enjoyed playing his Knuckles in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, so I'm definitely gonna check that out whenever I have time. But honestly, I shouldn't have to tell you that Sonic Mania is an amazing game, hence why my title is what it is, but as someone who just played it for the first time, I finally understand what all the hype is about, and I think it's more than justified. But forget about all that, it's time to look at the levels of Sonic Mania, otherwise known as the things that make the game so great. As soon as you open up the game, there are immediate classic Sonic vibes that I haven't gotten since I played the Sonic Mega Collection on my GameCube as a 4 year old. Also, unlike Sonic Forces, this has the original Sega loading screen and jingle as it should. Of course, you start off by playing Green Hill Zone as any good Sonic game should, but the atmosphere of Sonic Mania even feels a step above the rest. Of course, the game looks beautiful with it being 16x9 in 1080p, but seeing a Sonic game feel this smooth and have sprites on the level of Hyper Life Drifter is a dream come true for any Sonic fan's eyes. In terms of levels, there are 4 completely original levels and 8 levels that are at the very least inspired by other Sonic games, each with 2 acts. It seems that me along with everyone else in the entire world agree that the completely original levels are actually by far the best ones, and I mean come on, look at these things. The first one you play in is Studiopolis or Studioopolis or whatever it's called, which I believe is a level that was pitched to Sega with Sonic Mania. And I don't know about you guys, but if I'm Sega and I see this level, I'm hiring anyone associated with the game, especially considering what the Sega team was working on at the time. The level is beautiful, of course, but it's also extremely fun with the perfect combination that video games always strive to reach. Sonic is all about going fast, and the levels that have you start and stop a lot are far from my favorite, and in my opinion, the levels that have you going full speed ahead most of the time are peak Sonic platforming. But of course, you do need some rest areas in between. The level transition between the acts in this stage is also amazing, and come to think of it, the level transitions in this game in general are all spectacular. I'm pretty sure that Sonic 3 introduced these little cutscenes between the levels to make the whole game feel like an adventure, but Sonic Mania perfected it. I've been showing a bunch of them on screen though, of course, so you can see for yourself. After Studiopolis, the next original Sonic Zone is the Press Garden Zone, which is not only one of the most good looking beautiful platforming levels I've ever seen, period, but it's also accompanied by an amazing soundtrack and overall level layout. The color palette alone makes my eyeballs happy just looking at this level, and I've I've always been a fan of the Winter Forest vibes, especially when there's some other things added in. The second act of the zone looks completely different though, but equally as good. It's an incredibly beautiful garden that happens to be a newspaper printing facility, I guess. This level also has a lot of things that make it insanely fun to play, and again, I can't get over how good the stage looks. One of the things I really appreciate in any video games that use sprites are the backgrounds. Of course, this could be because I grew up playing Mega Man and Metroid, which of course have 
incredibly good looking background sprites, but regardless in Sonic Mania the backgrounds are shockingly good looking. I would say they carry the look of the stages, but the problem is every single part of the stage looks amazing, so really the backgrounds just have perfect chemistry with the rest of the stage. The next original zone after the press garden though is the desert one, also known as the Mirage Saloon Zone. The first act is an auto scroller, but it's still pretty fun, though you do have to be careful because you can spin dash off the back for some reason. I'm pretty sure at the beginning of the first act where you're on the plane, you could actually see Knuckles fall off, and when you play as Knuckles, I'm like 99% sure this is where his unique level starts. But I say 99% because I don't feel like dealing with any of the comments if I do happen to be wrong. The next act in this zone is what you guys want to see though. The second act of this zone is one of the best in the entire game because not only does it make the desert of all places extremely colorful and vibrant, but it also has a ton of fan service with there being wanted posters on the wall for some of the other Sonic characters as well as the boss fight at the end featuring said characters. Of course, I'm referring to them as those characters because I only know them from Sonic the Fighters and I forgot their name. But the level as a whole is more than amazing, but I'm sure you're able to tell that just by looking at it. The final original zone is the final zone where you're on the inside of a giant robot and one of the coolest things about this level surprisingly is the fact that Sonic is running on top of a bunch of cables and computer wires which I think is really cool. Also the fact that you're inside of a giant robot is really cool on its own but uh, hey hey I thought you needed the Super Nintendo VFX chips to have those kind of vector image graphics. The original zones from Sonic Mania are obviously a blessing to us sinners known as Sonic fans and one we probably didn't even deserve it that but even the other levels in Sonic have a ton of original additions to them and feel much better than they did in their original Sonic games, especially the water level. Skipping Green Hill Zone and going right into Chemical Plant Zone, this is straight up better than it was in Sonic 2. I love Sonic 2, and I love the Chemical Plant Zone in Sonic 2, despite drowning in purple water being a nightmare of mine as a child, but in Sonic Mania, regardless of the controls and graphics being better, the level itself is just amazing. These double helix teleporting things are cool for one, and the fact that there's more chemicals in the Chemical Plant Zone just makes sense. You could put blue and green chemicals into the purple water and make bouncy stuff for you to bounce on, which just feels like a perfect addition for the level that should have always been there. Also, yeah, the fact that it is harder to drown in the purple water in this version is also a plus. The next level is Flying Battery Zone, which is just after Studiopolis as seen on TV. This level does feel like a big spike in difficulty compared to the other levels, but that doesn't stop it from being insanely fun. Also, in terms of difficulty, Sonic Mania is much more forgiving than the originals, which to me makes it a better game. In the original games, if you ran out of lives and continues, then you have to start from the very beginning of the game, which is just ridiculous. In this game, if you run out of lives, Lives, then you have to start from the very beginning of the zone you're at, which is totally fine since most zones are only two acts anyway, so you get to stay frequently enough to not worry. But that doesn't make the game not difficult, which again is why I think this is the best 2D Sonic game. The next zone is Stardust Speedway, which is another zone with two vastly different acts. In the first act, you have this fun nature level where you run into a lot of different growing vine things, and I know I say that each level is fun, but the platforming is amazing, and all the sections where Sonic goes extremely fast are done perfectly throughout the entire game. Also, Sonic has has to Naruto run to go full speed, so don't you ever forget that. The second act of Stardust Speedway looks a lot more futuristic and cool, but the level plays similarly to the last one, minus all the vines and stuff. The boss is actually a super metal Sonic that you run away from at the end, who's surprisingly hard to face, and honestly, this is probably where I had the most trouble the entire game, but luckily, I only ran out of lives twice. The next level is the infamous water level, which in the original Sonic game, I hated to play and usually stopped me from playing the game entirely. And the number one thing that makes Sonic Mania the best 2D Sonic game is the fact that you can take alternate paths to avoid the water. Look man, drowning is just as terrifying as it's always been. So of course, I'm trying to stay on my little boat and mind my own business. The water level is actually fun, which is something I never thought I would say, especially in regards to a Sonic game, but clearly Sonic Mania can cause miracles. The first boss fight is also really cool because not only can you see Eggman beforehand, but you also get to be in this big old Sonic machine and rip Eggman up out of the water, which is just epic. And the second boss is actually really hard, but there was actually a game-breaking glitch I got where I just died and got a game over for literally no reason. But luckily, the second time I beat it much faster and it was much more fun. 
which of course is where a lot of the replay value in Sonic is. Playing Sonic over and over and getting to the point where you're really going non-stop is the best part of Sonic, so the first playthrough is very rarely the best. So while I only had time to beat the game once, I'm 100% gonna go back and play it in the future. But anyway, after the water level, you go to the oil ocean zone, which is awesome. There's oil everywhere and the level is amazing, which is good of course, but also if you get the fire shield and touch the oil, everything sets on fire, which of course is just awesome to look at. Thanks Mega Man 6 for inventing this, by the way. Also, the shields in this game all got a huge upgrade doing something extra. I'm not gonna list every single shield in their ability, but the fire one, for example, gives you a dash midair on top of just absorbing one of the attacks. In the second act of Oil Ocean, the Oil Ocean somehow managed to catch on fire and explode, so there's a lot of dust everywhere. But one thing Sonic Mania does perfectly here, where other games tend to struggle, is making sure all of the important sprites stand out through the dust more than enough to be seen, which is just phenomenally good job by the Sonic devs. Lava Reef Zone is another fun one, and it was originally in Sonic and Knuckles if I'm remembering correctly, though of course it's better in Sonic Mania, believe it or not. The last stage we haven't covered is the Metallic Madness Zone, which is certainly a madness. Of course the level is fun and looks good as all Sonic Mania levels do, but there are two really cool and fun mechanics in these levels that never get old to mess around with. The first one is the ability to jump between the foreground and background, which is always a good thing to have in 2D platforming games, so shoutouts to the homie Donkey Kong Country Returns for that addition. But also, you get Little Sonic! Sonic runs into a shrink ray and goes through some smaller areas in the course, similar to the mini mushrooms from New Super Mario Bros, but there's just something hilarious about seeing Tiny Sonic. Now that we've looked at all the levels, I want to show you guys the DLC for this game that actually comes for free if you have Sonic Mania Plus, like I do. And uh, normally I'd show you guys the final boss for the game, and he is cool and all, but this video is running out of time, and you should go see it for yourself, you lazy bum. So the DLC for this game actually isn't anything too crazy, but it adds two new characters to play as, being Ray and Mighty, which is pretty cool on its own. But it also adds Encore Mode, which is another game mode on the main story that not only changes the color palettes and a little bit of the levels themselves, but also gives you the ability to play as all the characters by swapping between them via power-ups you pick up. This is kind of weird, and I think it would be cooler to be able to just switch between the characters whenever you want, but this is still cool, and a lot of the swapped color palettes look absolutely amazing. That's basically all you need to know about the DLC, but there are a few more things about Sonic Mania that I do want to bring up. Number one, the mini games you play when you run into the giant gold rings are the best they've ever been. You basically chase this giant UFO holding your Chaos Emerald in these 3D looking levels, and it's about as fun as you can imagine it is. The original Blue Ball mini games are back though, don't worry. Once you get all the Chaos Emeralds from the UFOs, you unlock the ability to fight the real final boss of the game where you transform into Super Sonic, which is of course the perfect ending for a Sonic video game if you're asking me. So yeah, Sonic Mania is clearly God's gift to mankind, and it's an amazing game. It's absolutely perfect, and I can't think of a single way that Sega could improve the game in any way. Oh hey, I know. How about you let us play as Shadow? Shadow Man, Shadow Box, dancing. 